Oh, cool. So if you're playing along at home, you understand I sold the Buick and I got a little bit of money profited off of that. Not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, picked this one up. And no, it was not like this when I bought it. Uh, it was actually running and driving. It's just it had it was uh, overheating and had really bad misfire. Um, got to drive it a little bit. The brakes were a little bit scary, but uh, I, my son and I, we tore the cylinder heads off of it yesterday, last night, and we got those sitting in here getting ready to go to the machine shop they they look pretty good I'm not too worried about them being cracked uh, I don't think they are but you know we'll get them cleaned up we'll have them pressure tested and uh, make sure they're nice and straight before we do anything else with that but just a few small issues like yeah it's it's a 25 year old truck it's got dents and dings it lived on a farm but it's not terrible for a 25 year old pickup yeah as we walk around we can see clearly uh the tailgate is a different color um not worried about that <laughs> it's got you know it's general scratches and spots and oops didn't mean to leave this here last night it's an xlt got uh power windows power locks um like i said the brakes were a little bit scary but i think it's because the rears may be out of adjustment because you push the pedal, nothing happens, nothing happens, then all of a sudden at one point they, they just grab. So most likely it's the rear brakes out of adjustment. We'll get that fixed up. But something I wanted to attack today is the shifter is just loose as a goose. So I'm going to try and take all of this apart and see if I can't get that tightened back up. All right, so I got everything surrounding the column taken out. And I'm going to try and show you. I'm going to keep your eye on this bit right here. We can see this is just really sloppy right here in this part and it just it uh, I just went right past reverse there's reverse right there put it in park bring it down just a little tiny bit and it just it just keeps jumping past reverse so it takes a minute but this this whole tube is actually replaceable uh, I gotta drop the steering column to get it um, and we can replace all of the bushings that hold it in and that should bring this shifter right back to where it's supposed to be and one thing i've noticed while i'm down here is we can see the obd2 port goes into this and then plugs into another obd obd2 port which is connected to these non-stock wiring which uh pretty sure this goes to an anti-theft system of some sorts um if that tends to interfere with me getting this truck started now that i've had the battery disconnected for god knows how long um we're gonna have to remove that. In fact, I'll probably do that while I'm here now. All right, so come to find out, you know, this that OBD2 port and then this plugged into the OE OBD2 port. There's only two wires coming out of this mess of wires here. And it looks like this isn't an anti-theft system at all. This looks like it's a tracker of some type. Uh, might even be, since it's only two wires, it might even be just a uh, keyless entry, possibly. Heck, I don't know. But until I can get some parts going here to fix this uh, shifter column tube thing to get that nice and straightened out, um, that window doesn't work. And I think it's the motor, so that's next. Missing a screw. I swear to God, if I ever find out who has worked on this truck in the past and did this half-assed crap, I'm going to find you, I'm going to take your tools away, and I'm going to make you regret ever picking the profession of working on cars. All right, so we got this door panel off. I found a uh, USB car charger thing. That'll come in handy in one of my other vehicles. I think this speaker has seen some better days. What do you think? All right, uh, access to the motor is somewhat denied. <laughs> so I got the connector to it right here. Um, got my battery hooked up there. And I'm gonna try and show you guys what it is that I'm doing. Okay, I'm messing with this connector here. I'm gonna put the ground for my power probe, which by the way, if you don't have one of these things and you do a lot of electrical stuff, what are you doing? You've gotta have one of these. So we have continuity. Nothing happens there. I can hear the motor clicking, but nothing's happening. Also, again, motor's clicking, nothing's happening. 
so motor's dead. And since it appears that I'm gonna have to drill these rivets out to get the window regulator and all that out, might as well get the regulator too. <sighs> Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe a speaker. Uh, <laughs> gee. Uh, I am though hoping that this thing will clean up somewhat nice. Nice big dent there. I might be able to pop that out. But I'm hoping these wheels clean up nicely because overall it, other than the hood and the roof being, and the tailgate being a different color, uh, it's really not a bad truck. It, the little bit that I drove it, it drove nicely. I mean, other than the misfire and the, and the horrible brakes. But it rode really smooth and it was on a dirt road so that's not bad and yeah i need to get a lug stud another lug nut i'll get some center caps for it you know maybe i'll paint the wheels black we'll see i'll, I'll bring this back to life too that's not supposed to be that but yeah this would make a great little work truck for somebody hopefully that somebody's gonna come along and buy this sucker when i'm done but yes, there is quite a lot to do under the hood. Um, I mean, it's basically almost exactly the same as the Excursion, just minus two cylinders. Um, and this one's a lot older than the Excursion was. This is an early 4.6. It doesn't have coil on plugs. It's actually got the, uh, the coil packs that sit off to the side and plug wires and all that and everything. But uh, fun fact, very interesting. I've already thrown the gaskets away, but when we took it apart, um, what I found out where the coolant was, where it was losing coolant and uh, what was causing the misfire was back here on the intake manifold, the gasket, um, it, it ended up blowing and it was leaking coolant out of there and it was dropping coolant into the rear two spark plug tubes, thus causing the misfire and thus causing the overheating issue. And since I don't know exactly how hot it got, I didn't want to just replace the intake gaskets. So I figured, all right, I'm this far, I might as well take all of it apart and go ahead, get the cylinder heads checked out, make sure that the top of this motor is good. Plus, we're at, the thing's at 269,000 miles. The timing chain guides weren't looking so good, so we might as well get new guides, get new tensioners, get new chains, and, and we'll really, really, really make this engine as strong as it possibly can be. So that way, there's no issues when I go and put this thing back together and try and get it sold off. But yeah, this this one, this one's gonna be fun. Oh, <laughs> I need one of those. Looks like that, but goes there. But I believe that's gonna wrap this one up today. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.